So I apologize for not being on camera for this one, but uh, I was having some technical difficulties, so you're just going to get some voiceover gameplay stuff here, uh, maybe a few relevant images, because I have something I want to say, and I feel it's extremely important to talk about uh, in wake of any concerns people have over a new potential Switch, uh, the Nick A report kind of suggesting that the, uh, instead of like a Switch Pro, it'll be a next generation Switch, which is kind of like going from PlayStation 4 to PlayStation 5, uh, the Switch Mini, and essentially the idea that uh, it doesn't matter what Nintendo does because they're going to be screwed by PlayStation 5. We now know some of the specs for PlayStation 5, which are pretty impressive, at least on paper. Um, and that the Switch Pro or the new generation Switch needs to exist or the Switch itself is going to be left in the dust by the PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox. And I'm going to say something here that, I don't know, is this, is this even a controversial take? Um, but I think it's obvious and something that needs to be stated because nobody seems to be willing to admit it. But the Nintendo Switch is not competing with the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. It's not competing with the PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox. It's not even competing with cloud gaming services. You can argue, in general, the Switch competes with all of these because it is a video game platform like all of the rest. But what the Switch is doing isn't replaced by a PlayStation 5. It isn't replaced by the next Xbox, or the PlayStation 4 for that matter, or the Xbox One, or Google Stadia, or any of these other services. None of them replace what the Nintendo Switch does. Now, you could argue Google Stadia might come the closest, but again, there's a requirement to that that the Switch doesn't need, aka the internet. So, the Switch is really only competing with itself. Now, let me be clear, there are other hybrid systems on the market. Uh, there's like the GDP Win 2, probably the GDP Win 3 coming out soon. Uh, there's a couple other um, handheld containers out there. Obviously, the Vita was around for a while. Uh, 3DS kind of competed with Nintendo's platform, although obviously in a different way. And ultimately, the Switch is kind of in its own territory at the moment, where maybe its closest competitor is a smartphone. Uh, but even then... The Switch has unique advantages for gaming over smartphones, such as it comes with controllers, uh, with physical buttons, such as an easy dock with your TV that doesn't require like opening up different applications and wirelessly connecting. And even when you wire connect to the TV, it's not perfect with phones sometimes. So, uh, and then it depends on what brand TV you have. Like I have a Samsung smart TV and I have a Samsung phone, so they interface really well together. But even then, it requires some extra effort over just literally drop the switch in a dock and it just works. So the reality we're sitting at here is Nintendo Switch Pro or the next generation Nintendo Switch doesn't need to exist because PlayStation 5 and the next Xbox are coming. I've said this before and people get mad at me every time I bring it up because they think that I am against the idea of Switch getting all AAA third-party games, which that couldn't be further from the truth. I have publicly stated on many occasions that I want Switch to get every game. But the Nintendo Switch isn't successful because of those games. I've brought this up before and I hate that I gotta bring it up again. But Nintendo Switch is selling on the back of exclusives, on the back of Nintendo games like Wii U ports, and on the back of some of the best indie games in the market, none of which necessarily require the most powerful hardware. So what you're left with is that Switch's sales are primarily coming from first-party games, second-party games, third-party exclusive games, out to Pat Traveler, although it's going to PC, it's still console exclusive, just as an example. Mario Plus Ravens Kingdom Battle, Fire Emblem Warriors, etc. Uh, you know, second party games, and you could argue things like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, although Nintendo wholly owns that studio now, but whatever. They didn't found the studio that technically makes a second party. The point I'm making is that these games are what's selling the system. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, in partnership with obviously Sakurai's team and a Bandai Namco. Like, these are the games that are moving switches. This year, what are the games that are going to move the needle for Switch? Well, Super Mario Maker 2 landing in June is probably the first major game that's really going to move the needle for Switch. Not Yoshi's Crafted World last month, not uh, Mortal Kombat you know, 11 this month, although I think it might perform better on Switch than I anticipated. I don't consider it a system seller, but Super Mario Maker 2 in June. Uh, we have Fire Emblem Three Houses in July. Uh, we're going to have an Animal Crossing at some point this year. 
right? We're going to have uh, Pokemon coming out probably in November. So the, those are kind of like the pillars under which the Switch is selling. And in between, everything else just sells really, really well is filler content uh, like Yoshi's Crafted World or like Kirby or Mario Tennis Aces. Uh, Super Mario Party, all these kind of games will sell just really well in between, as do a bunch of indie games. None of this changes when the PlayStation 5 comes out. None of this changes when the next Xbox comes out. So the Switch is supposed to suddenly be crippled in sales because platforms are coming out that don't replace what Nintendo does? Unless PlayStation 5 is a hybrid portable system for $300 or less... What is Nintendo worried about? And based on the specs they, they detailed, it's not that. Because those specs are not available in the type of mobile form Nintendo has. You can get it in like a laptop form, but that's a little, uh, that, that's well beyond being remotely close to being handheld. Some people feel like Switch even pushes the boundaries on being a traditional handheld system. Uh, just because of its size and it not necessarily being as pocketable as some other platforms out there. So the reality that we're facing here is that the next generation Switch, if it's if that's what it's going to be, or a Switch Pro, if that's what it's going to be, or a Switch XL, the Switch Mini, these platforms aren't existing because of what the competitors are doing. Nintendo has told us repeatedly that they don't make decisions based on what the competition does. And that has frustrated many of us for years because then it means that Nintendo's not paying attention to what's going on around them. I mean, the Nintendo Switch, you know, online as an example, could be much better if Nintendo paid attention to what everyone else is doing instead of trying to do their own thing. So it's been to their detriment at times. But it's also to their unique advantage, too. What Nintendo did with Wii and catching lightning in a bottle was literally doing the exact opposite of what everyone else was doing. They were pushing for HD and just, you know, more powerful systems. And Nintendo's like, look, we're just going to give you a GameCube again. Yes, I know it was more powerful than a GameCube, but same chip. Uh, so we're just going to give you a GameCube again, but give you motion controls. And it worked. Oh, you know, handhelds are getting more powerful. Well, how about instead of just we're focusing on power, let's give you two screens. Or let's give you glasses-free 3D. Or let's give you a tablet bundled in with your system. I know it seems really weird today to talk about Wii U in that light. But uh, still, it all came from Nintendo just not caring what anyone else is doing and just doing their own thing. And what Nintendo has done with Switch is do their own thing yet again. Now, they aren't the first hybrid system to come out, of course, but they are the first hybrid system to be this successful because, as everything in life, timing is important, software is important, functionality is important, uh, branding can be very important as well, and all of this kind of works to the Switch's advantage, in addition to the product itself looking like something an adult wants to actually own, all the advertising targeted at young adults, uh, some very smart marketing at play. Uh, Switch itself is a success for many reasons, and uh, part of that is because there is nothing that actually does what the Switch does, at least at this level of popularity, uh, and because of that, you're left with a platform that doesn't need to concern itself with the fact it's not as powerful as a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One because its bread and butter in terms of sales isn't the games that those systems get. This game, like this system, doesn't sell because of FIFA and Madden and Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed. It's selling because of Mario and Zelda and I almost said Pikmin for a second, but whoo, we need to get that Pikmin 4. Um, eventually Animal Crossing here and Pokemon and Smash Bros and Mario Kart and Kirby, and all those games are like why this system is selling, not because we got L.A. Noir last year, or Skyrim, or we did get FIFA the last couple of years, and NBA, and all those games do well enough, but if you look at the actual sales, that's not what's moving the needle, so again, the PlayStation 5 is looking really impressive with its Ryzen 3 CPU at, at 8 cores, although we don't know uh, what clock speeds those cores are running at. Um, with its new Navi GPU with ray tracing. All sounds great. So, you know, the, apparently some next generation SSD technology that PC users don't even have. All, like, all of this sounds amazing. But the big caveat here is Switch isn't competing with that in the first place. That is for something that is built to be in your home, under your TV, and never move. That isn't what Switch is. Switch is meant to be taken with you anywhere. The idea, the very premise of Nintendo Switch is game the way you want anywhere. You want a game on your TV? Do it. You want to pick that game up and take it with you on a walk? Do it. 
on the bus, on the train, on the airplane. It's transformative, right? From tabletop to handheld to on your TV. PlayStation 5 is not doing that. So until I hear the PlayStation 5 and Xbox One are actually trying to encroach on the audience Switch is getting for itself, which is a hybrid audience, and maybe you could argue Switch is a secondary system for some of those people that own PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, and that's fine. Or PC. But that's the thing. What is happening with the next generation systems doesn't affect what's happening with Switch. The only thing that you can be concerned about at all is that the sparing third-party support we do get, the Doom Eternals, the Wolfenstein 2s of the world, the Mortal Kombat 11, the Crash Team Racing, that we're just not going to get those games for a while. But then, this is where I have to remind you how Sony handled last generation and what Mark Cerny said about the upcoming generation. He stated in the same article when he's talking about backwards compatibility and how amazing the PlayStation 5 is going to be, he openly stated that they are going to be supporting the PlayStation 4 for years to come. What that means is, if you remember the transition between PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4, for two to three years, almost all of the games that came, almost all, not all of them, but almost all of the major games that came to PlayStation 4 still released on the PlayStation 3. <sighs> So what does that mean for Switch? Well, it means that the kind of support we're getting now, we're still going to get for the next two to three years until developers stop making those lesser versions, you know, quote unquote lesser versions of the game for older hardware. So Switch is still perfectly positioned to have a normal five to six year console run before PlayStation 5 could even possibly threaten getting rid of all of those games from Switch. And granted, we don't get a lot of them as is. So what is the point then of releasing a next generation Switch next year or a Switch Pro? Well, the point is to fix things that are wrong with the Switch. Because what becomes apparent over time, and I talked about this in my theory about how the Switch Pro or I guess this next gen Switch might be what Switch was always meant to be, is that Switch is an inherently flawed system. It's an amazing system with massive appeal, but it's flawed. And the longer they don't do anything about those flaws on a massive scale, the more and more of those flaws are going to feel like it's holding back the system years down the road. The idea of Nintendo Switch, at least with what we can gather from NVIDIA in their public statements, is they have a 10-year partnership, which means Switch itself has like a 10-year life cycle. And you're not going to keep the OG Switch released in 2017 using technology from 2015 as relevant in 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023 uh, by just continuing to roll out that technology with all of the inherent flaws that tech has plus the switch has in general from scratching screens and broken locks and joy-con drift and all like all of these things can be addressed on the individual level or you can redesign the product repurpose the product repackage that product and give us a better version a next generation version of switch as it were and in doing that, you end up with a product that has more staying power in the market. You end up with a product that can slowly phase out the original Switch with a better version that makes people not feel like it's so dated. And I think that is why Switch is doing what it's doing. It's got nothing to do with the PlayStation 5 or the next Xbox. It has to do with the Switch itself. I think all of us as Switch owners need to be honest with ourselves. This platform is flawed. It has problems. Most of us have experienced some of these problems at some point. That is why a new Switch is coming. That is why a next generation Switch is coming. To fix what is already wrong with the platform to make it have a longer shelf life with consumers. It's not about competing with PlayStation 5 and Xbox 2. And we need to stop pretending that that's what Nintendo is trying to do. How many times does Nintendo need to beat us over the head and tell us we're not competing with those platforms? They literally created a hybrid platform that nothing else in the market can touch because nobody else is trying to do it. That's what's so baffling here. You might as well say the next Xbox is going to destroy VR and make all current VR irrelevant when that's probably not even the focus of the platform. The point is... PlayStation 5 and Xbox, next Xbox, as far as I can tell, they're not portable. You can't take them anywhere. That has nothing to do with replacing what the Nintendo Switch does. Any fear over that is just people fear-mongering and being worried about their purchases. Or, honestly, it's probably just ammunition for people who already were trashing on the Switch the whole time anyways. And those kind of people, who cares what they think? 
Let them enjoy the platforms they enjoy because uh, they obviously must not be having that much fun if they have all this spare time to come over and trash a platform they don't enjoy. And for those of you out there that are maybe hoping Nintendo goes back to two systems, goes back to having a traditional home console, because, hey, Switch Mini's coming out, might not be dockable. Oh, man, does that mean that they should have a version of Switch that's only under your TV? It's not going to happen. I mean, the latest the latest rumors out of Nikkei says that the Switch is dockable. So the Switch Mini is dockable. So some of that's already being possibly debunked. And on top of that, why would they make a traditional home console to put under your TV? Why? Nintendo has openly, publicly stated they have no interest competing with the other platforms that way. It's almost as if people want Nintendo to stop being Nintendo. So... Don't worry about it. If you own a current Switch, it'll be playing all the games for the next couple of years. Uh, if you're wait, holding out for a Switch Pro, you're going to be waiting a while. Uh, I know there's videos out there uh, saying, hey, don't buy a Switch right now because we might be getting a Switch Pro or Switch Mini. Unless a miniaturized version of the system for Pokemon matters to you, there's no reason to not buy a Switch right now. Go ahead. Pick it up. We're not going to get the Pro this year. Guarantee it's not coming this year. Uh, 2020 at the earliest. And even then, it's all it's going to be doing is, yeah, it might be more powerful, of course, but it's going to be trying to fix everything the Switch got wrong the first time around. So it remains relevant in the marketplace. It's the same reason we get new phones all the time. Most of the time when new phones come out, they are not significant upgrades in that phone to make... I mean, heck, how, how long have we been using the Snapdragon 45? Like, it feels like three years, right? And now we finally have the Snapdragon 55. And let me tell you, with my Samsung Note 9, having touched the Samsung um, Galaxy 10, um, it really doesn't feel any different. Uh, maybe a little snappier here or there. The point I'm making here is phones keep doing these sort of upgrades to keep themselves more relevant in the marketplace. That's all Switch is doing. It's going to fix the flaws of the first. It's probably going to be a little bit more powerful, and that's great. But that's great because that's the Switch staying relevant in its own marketplace. It's not about staying relevant with PlayStation 5. Anyways, I'm Nathana Robojans from Nintendo Prime. Be sure to enter our Nintendo Switch Super Smash Bros. Ultimate giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. I hope you enjoyed this discussion, and I'll catch you in the next video.